But a question remains, yes, a story can help students organize information, but will it help them remember information? Yes, priming is good for attention and organization, but is it good for learning and memory? Hello everybody and welcome to this week's From Theory to Practice, where I take a look at the research so you don't have to. Now the article I've selected this week is called The Effects of Introduction Type on Comprehension and Memory by Mensink and Colleagues. Now to understand this paper, we have to wrap our heads around the idea of priming. Now simply put, priming says any ideas, facts, concepts, or strategies you already have activated in your brain that's gonna dictate how you understand, interpret, and organize later learned information. Now, just as a simple example, I wanna play a quick game with you. So on your screen, I'm gonna pop up a very common word, a word I guarantee you know. Your job is to simply guess what this word is here. Hmm. Now check this out, I'm gonna prime you. All I'm gonna do is activate some ideas in your brain. So here we go, let me start priming you. Circle, triangle, square, Pentagon. Now let's go back to that word. Can you tell me what it is now? Of course you can. This time it was easy. Now I want you to recognize that nothing about the material changed. It was no harder, no easier. The only thing that changed is you had relevant facts already activated in your brain and that helped you interpret and comprehend this information differently. Now in education, our priming usually comes during our warm-ups. How do we start a class? How do we start a book chapter? How do we start a lecture? And whatever we're activating in those first, say, five, 10 minutes, that's dictating how students are understanding the remaining 40 minutes of that class. Now priming warm-ups can come in any number of flavors. You have things like advanced organizers, you have things like quizzes, you can grade homework. But one thing we can do is use narrative, story. Use a story to introduce and frame an idea at the beginning, and then all learning will somehow swing back into and be understood through that story. But a question remains, yes, a story can help students organize information, but will it help them remember information? Yes, priming is good for attention and organization, but is it good for learning and memory? And that's what the authors of this paper wanted to find out. So what they did is they took several sections from different scientific textbooks. So sections exploring a key scientific idea. And they had different groups of students read these sections. But the twist is here. Group one simply read the section and then took a quiz to see what they recalled. Group two first read a narrative, a story about a human being who needs to learn this material, and then they read the section and took a quiz. And group three started by reading an expository narrative. So this is a narrative that doesn't include characters, but just has a story, a plot line relevant to the material, then they read the material, and then they took a quiz. So just as a simple example, imagine one of the sections these kids had to read concerned CO2, greenhouse gases, and global warming. Group one would have simply read that material, taken a quiz. Group two would have started by reading a narrative of a human being who needs to use that information. So for instance, say a story about a father whose child is getting really sick in the heat, and the father needs to figure out what's causing this increased temperature so he can help his kid feel better. So a narrative story. Meanwhile, the third group before reading the section, they'd read an expository story. So in this case, something about how water levels are rising along coasts. So what's causing these sea level changes? Then they'd go and read the passage and answer questions. So in terms of recall and comprehension, what did they find? Well, the two groups being primed with narratives, they were able to recall about 63% of the scientific material after they'd read it. Meanwhile, the control group, they were only able to recall about 40% of the material. So it looks like narrative not only helped people engage with their reading, but it helped them remember the material better. But we've got one other issue. Will this memory sustain? Yeah, sure, right after you read something, you may or may not remember it, but what happens seven days later? So in the second study of this paper, these researchers did the exact same experiment, except that final recall test didn't happen after they read, it happened seven days after they read. They wanted to see if all learning would sustain. And what did they find? They found that one week after reading, people who read the stories were able to recall about 34% of the scientific material. Meanwhile, the people in the control group, their memory for the scientific material dropped to 20%. So it looks like using stories or narrative as an advanced organizer can boost learning, and that learning doesn't drop any more significantly than standard learning. So let's bring this back to us. What does this mean for us as teachers? Well, I can think of three things. First, how we start 
is all important. Those first 10 minutes of class will dictate how the remaining 40 minutes of class happens. What facts, strategies, skills are we bringing online to ensure kids have the best chance to make sense of and remember the information we're gonna give them afterwards. And in this instance, we see that story is a great advanced organizer. And one of the great ones is what we call the cliffhanger story. Can you weave a narrative that gets up to a certain point where a character or an event has to happen then you stop the story and say, okay, now you need to solve that story by using the information we're about to learn. So we actually tie the learned information directly into the advanced organizer. Now, the second thing I think that's important to recognize here is that people worry when we use narratives or story, that's gonna become the primary focus. Like there's always a fear that if I use a story to introduce an idea, students will remember that story, but they'll forget the details, the information that I really wanted them to know. And here we see that doesn't appear to be the case. In truth, students' memory of the material only dropped about 50%. So we start to see the story truly is simply being used to organize and make sense of the later learned information. So we needn't fear stories becoming the focal point. They can serve simply as a scaffold and we still maintain the learning we wanna do. And the third thing I can think of is this, is it doesn't appear to matter what type of narrative we're using. So long as there's some sort of beginning, some sort of middle, some end, we can have characters, we can have emotions, we can have feelings, or we can have events. And here's where we start to see we can draw in real world experiences to help scaffold modern learning. Is there a story going on in the news? Is there something that just happened in some country somewhere? We can tap into that, bring that in as an advanced organizer and use that to help guide new learning. And as always, that's not gonna harm the new learning. It's simply gonna help students organize and make sense of it. So for those of us who work in fields like psychology or neuroscience where people are very important, our stories can include individuals. I had a patient, I had a student, I once knew a guy. But for others who work in fields where it's harder to find personal stories, like some abstract maths or engineering, that's okay, we don't need a person-centered narrative. We can find a context or situational narrative that we can use and will have the same impact. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope that was good and you got something from that. If you like what you saw, if you can give us a thumbs up and comment below, it'll make sure more people on YouTube get a chance to see this. Otherwise, thank you all so much for hanging out and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.